Hi everyone. How you doing? Did you have a lovely day yesterday in the snow? It was brilliant, wasn't it? It's all gone a bit crunchy now though. We've not had any more snow. I don't know whether you have, but we haven't. So um, it's it's okay, but it's a bit icy underfoot. So I think Nana's going to wait a bit before she goes out. <laughs> and uh, yeah, anyway. So um, I thought I'd read you a story from Animal Stories today. And it's called The Tale of the Goldfish. So if you're sitting comfortably, then I'll begin. Once upon a time, thousands of years ago, there lived in China a merchant who was very fond of fishes. He kept four big ponds and in each swam a different kind of fish. Some little, some big, some brightly coloured, some speckled with silver spots. The merchant loved his fish and he fed them every day. He liked his bright coloured fish the best. There were some that had blue streaks down their sides and others that seemed to have caught a rainbow in their tails. The merchant leaned over his ponds to watch his fish and longed for one thing. He wanted to breed a fish that was bright gold from nose to tail. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of silver fish, he said to himself. There are many rainbow coloured fish and others that are spotted and speckled with brilliance. But no one in the whole world has ever had a fish that was all gold. How lovely it would be. How everyone would marvel. There, would, there could never be a prettier fish than a gold one. And it would give pleasure to all the people no matter where they lived. So he tried very hard to rear a fish that was all gold. But he found it was impossible. Some fish had bright yellow spots on them. Some had orange coloured streaks. But none was all gold from tip to tail. The merchant fell on bad times and he lost a great deal of his money. He became poor and shabby. He shut up his large house and lived in a small corner of it without servants to wait on him. But he did never forget to feed his fish. He became an old man and gave up the idea of rearing fish of gold. He found that he was happy even though he was poor. And when his little grandchildren came to see him and climbed on his knee to listen to his stories, he wished for nothing better. The night, One night a strange traveller came to the old merchant's house. The great bell outside the gate jangled to and fro as it had not done for years. And the merchant heard it in surprise. He could be coming. Who could be coming to his house now? He had no rich friends. They had all forsaken him. He went through the long passages that led to the front gate and unbarred it. Outside stood a cloaked man, his horse beside him. Does Wang Fu, the great merchant, live here? asked the visitor in a deep voice. Honourable sir, it is Wang Fu you see before you, said the merchant, bowing, but I am no longer great. I am a poor man and my house is empty. Enter, I pray you, for I will find you shelter and food, though it will not be of grand quality. The visitor stepped inside. The merchant took him to a great marble basin where he might wash and then slipped out to see to the horse. He stabled it in an empty stable, gave it food to eat and then went to prepare a meal for his unexpected guest. In an old chest he had a few dainties stored away and these he took out. Soon he had a meal ready and went to call his visitor. He found him leaning over the ponds, looking at the fish in the moonlight. You are fond of your fish, I see, said the visitor, raising his head. They come swimming up to my hand, tame and friendly. Yes, said the merchant. It has always been a dream of mine to breed a fish of gold from head to tail, but I have never done so. Come, honourable sir, your supper is prepared. They sat down to eat, and at last the visitor told the old merchant who he was and why he'd come. I am Sing Fu, he said the son of an old washerwoman you had many years ago. But you are a wealthy man, well favoured and wise, said the old merchant in astonishment. It is so, said the visitor. My mother put me in the service of Lei Tu, the famous magician, and I found favour in his sight, so that he made me a son of his. Now Lei Tu is dead and I have his wealth and much of his learning. The merchant got up and bowed himself to the ground until his forehead touched the floor. He was in great awe of enchanters and he trembled to think that he had one in his shabby house. Rise, said the visitor, do not kneel to me. My mother would not have you do that. And is your honourable mother still alive and well? asked the merchant, seating himself again, but still trembling in his surprise and excitement. She is well and happy, said the enchanter gravely. 
but it is her request that I have come to see you. Do you remember her, honourable host? Yes, said the merchant at once. She was fat and jolly, and she washed my linen better than anyone else. And do you remember when she fell ill and could not work for five weeks, asked the visitor. The merchant felt uncomfortable. He had treated the, had he treated the old woman unkindly, he could not remember. It would be dreadful if she had sent her son to punish him for any unkindness done of her years ago. No, I do not remember her illness, he said at last. My mother remembers, said the magician. You picked her up and carried her up to bed. You sent a doctor to make her well again, and you paid her wages all the weeks that she could not work. She has never forgotten. And now that she has a son who is wealthy and powerful, she has asked me to go to all the, those who were once kind to her and reward them. So I've come to you. The old merchant was amazed. And do you also visit those who treated your mother ill, he asked. Do you punish as well as reward? No, for such is not my mother's wish, said the enchanter gravely. She has forgotten her enemies, not her well-doers. Now, honourable friend, you are poor and shabby. I bring you riches and honour, and they will bring you happiness. There you are wrong, said the merchant quietly. Neither riches nor honour bring happiness. I am happy now without them. I do not want gold, nor do I want servants, rich food, embroidered clothes. I am old and tired, but I am happy. Leave me as I am. The magician looked at the old man in wonder. Never before had he met anyone who refused what he had to offer. He said nothing more, and bidding the merchant good night, lay down on a mat to sleep. But in the middle of the night he went to his horse and took a sack from its back. In the sack were great bars of gold, of which he had bought as a present for the old man. Now they would not be wanted, but the magician had bought, thought of something splendid to do with them. He took them to one of the ponds, where pretty green fish were swimming, and one by one he slid the bars of gold into the water. Murmuring magic words as he did so, each bar dissolved into a cloud of orange gold, and beyond the fishes were attracted by the strange mist in the water, and swam up in shoals to see what it was. And when morning came, each fish was bright orange gold from head to tail. The old merchant saw them when searching for his midnight visitor, who had strangely disappeared. He stood by the pond, amazed and delighted. His dream had come true at last. Here were goldfish, bright gold from nose to tail. And when you see a gleaming goldfish, remember the kind-hearted merchant and his old washerwoman, and be kind to others yourself. You never know what magic you may start. Isn't that lovely to know where goldfish come from? Wow. I enjoyed that story. I like stories with happy endings. I make you go, oh, goosey. I love you loads, though. And I will see you again tomorrow. Um, not sure what I'm going to read you, because I need to have a look in the books. But it will be a nice little tale, like that one. And um, I'm sure you'll enjoy it and think about it when you go to bed. So, you sleep well. I love you loads and loads. So, night, night, Torben. I love you. Night, night, Atty. I love you. Night, night, Ruby. I love you. And night, night, Max. I love you loads. You be good. And I'll see you again tomorrow.